Hello! Happy Wednesday! Welcome! Sorry for being a little late. I am Dr. Medea Saeed, aka Holistic Mom MD, here to educate and empower you guys from the inside out. And guess what? I am here with my Abdullah son. <laughs> Of course, but Abdullah, and he is my 11 year old baby, big boy, that is what is going to help us educate you guys about those factors of inflammation. So, to recap, when you are dealing with a chronic condition, either if you're dealing with fatigue and digestive issues, problems with um, headaches, visual changes, digestive complaints, autoimmunity, cancers, all of those symptoms are due to the underlining root cause of inflammation. And if we can heal the underlining root cause, you can heal not one of those symptoms, but then all of them simultaneously. So Abdullah's gonna quickly recap all the factors that if imbalanced can lead to inflammation and cause chronic conditions. Well, the things that can cause inflammation is a lack of defic um, detoxification. Uh, you have to, you eat the bad foods, um, you don't treat your, like, you don't have a healthy gut, a lack of gratitude, um, you don't have any social, like, the social health, your sleep, and stress management. So we gotta make sure that we incorporate gratitude, keep people around you that love you, um, have people, you know, make sure you're sleeping properly, make sure you incorporate a stress management technique into your daily routine. And then we have is your di uh, digestive digestive health and you're um, making sure you keep your gut health. I've talked a lot about this in previous videos, so keep those foods out that will heal, uh, worsen your gut flora and eat those foods like vegetables, protein, healthy fats, a lot of water, bone broth, you know, fish oil, vitamin D, and that's what we're going to talk about, um, all to rebalance the gut bacteria and repair the gut lining. And also then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we, because these foods, that whenever you put food in your body, you want to make sure that it helps heal the gut, it balances your insulin levels, and that it um, balances your insulin levels and is a nutrient-dense food for you, vegetables, protein, healthy fats. And then make sure we incorporate at least Epsom salt baths into our daily routine um, because that will help for detoxification. Yeah. So today, because we've been talking about supplementation, and um, supplements, right, are, remember supplements are just a piece of the puzzle because it really just helps to, you know, bridge the gap so then you can have like those deficiencies because a lot of people, especially with our diet and our lifestyles, uh, we have a lot of deficiencies. Hi, Daniela. Um, we have a lot of deficiencies. So what we want to do is we, we're going to talk about the ones that I usually recommend to a lot of people that I feel like a lot of people are deficient in. And then we're gonna talk about which one? Um, vitamin D. And about how many, how many, how much percentage of the adults in the United States are deficient? Well, 90, up to 90% of the adults, of the adults in the USA are vitamin D deficient. 90%, isn't that crazy? And actually, so let's talk about what that is, you guys. Thank you guys for jumping on. If you are here with me, I would love to know where you're from, what you're up to. Give me any, give me heart love. I want to know where you're uh, coming and calling in from, calling in from, you know, watching from. So remember, vitamin D is actually a pro hormone, and it's a precursor to so many enzyme uh, preventing proteins, like sorry, disease preventing protein enzymes. Um, it helps for binding to many receptors that causes changes in cell function. We normally get it from the sunlight, but what happens is that, so what usually happens is the sunlight hits our skin and our liver and our kidneys transform the vitamin D into a more active form and allowing our cells to read DNA and instructions more effectively. And it's really important for our genetic code. Then we also have that because this DN, this vitamin D also regulates like vital protein, like po components of like your hormones and your neurotransmitters like serotonin. Um, they also help control uh, cell growth. So there's so many other things that, that they're so responsible for. So the vitamin D deficiency, right? Vitamin D deficiency 
what is it correlated with? Like, if, we, well, if somebody has vitamin D deficiency, what do they have a high risk of get, developing? Well, they have a high risk of um, developing common cancers, uh, getting autoimmune diseases, hypertension, and various infections, infectious diseases. Wow. So that's crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Because again, you know, vitamin D, let's quickly talk about um, let's quickly talk about all of the pieces that, you know, one, what does vitamin D, like what are the benefits of taking vitamin D? Well, the benefits are they contribute to the bone health, they help manage blood sugar levels and can prevent diabetes, it prevent, pre uh, protects against cancer, fights off height, heart disease, enhances the immune system, um, fat facilitates hormone regulations and help improve your mood, helps with concentration, concentra concentration, <laughs> learning, and memory. Wow, awesome, awesome, awesome. So yes, so they do a lot. And we are so now deficient in these vitamin Ds because remember, just to recap, vitamin D is disease preventer and vital for decreasing inflammation and lowering insulin resistance. And its deficiencies are lead, lead to all of these diseases that Abdullah talked about earlier. So now, now this is gonna, where we're going to get fun and exciting, right? Because where, what is vitamin D located in? So how can you get it? Like what kind of foods? What else? Okay, so you can back? get... He's going to take over. So you can get um, vitamin D from a halibut, cutfish... Mackerel, eel, may take mushrooms, salmon, whitefish, portobello mushrooms, swordfish, rainbow trout, cod liver oil, sardines, eggs, and raw milk. There are raw milk. Uh, oh, also tuna. So vitamin D is also in mush. Like like I said, it's in mushrooms. So, it comes from ma mushrooms. They are one of the only plant sources of with it that have vitamin D. And actually, acts similar to So, <laughs> so the thing is that uh, deficiencies can cause, like, you can get the lack of sun. Uh, sunscreen doesn't really allow the body to convert conv a vitamin D from the sun. So there's that too. Then there's also, there's also. Oh, you're back. Okay, I'm back. Woohoo. Sorry, you guys. Uh, nature called. So for one of my kids. <laughs> so I need to take care of that. Awesome. So we have all of those foods you talked about. So did you talk about the symptoms that somebody has when they have vitamin D deficient? We already did. You just did? No, I talked about, so I was like... Yeah, I so just talked this, about the food. I talked about a little like this. Awesome, 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 awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about the what happens when you have deficiency. So if you have vitamin D deficiency, Abdullah, what symptoms do you have? You have heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, autoimmune diseases, depression, arthritis, diabetes, asthma, familiar? chronic pain, autism, weakness, chronic fatigue, depression, trouble sleeping, anxiety, weak or broken bones, weakened immune system, inflammation, and swelling. Those are, That's a lot. That's a lot, symptoms. you guys, because... So a lot of the symptoms that people come to me with, are a lot of them could be due to vitamin D deficiency. And I know, so there's a difference between, so you're like, okay, so one, um, how are we, we talked about the foods that you can do to get it. So that obviously that if you can get it from a natural source, that's the best way to do it. But we want to, um, cause, but you need to sometimes at least, because you can get, if you want to just get all of your vitamin D from the sun, you have to literally expose yourself 40% of your skin uh, just until it turns pink 
or one shade darker and sunbathing um, from close to noon to 1 p.m. using a mineral-based sunscreen to help optimize vitamin D conversion. So that's a lot, that's craziness. And then we talked about the specific foods. But there are, because a lot of people are so deficient, sometimes I just like to supplement. And there's obviously a natural, more natural sources, which are cod liver oil, which we do, right? Yeah. We take cod liver oil, which is an amazing source of vitamin D. It has vitamin D and vitamin A in it. And then there are, um, we also, because we, there's when you go to check for vitamin D, you want to make sure your levels are between, so there's a difference between normal and optimal. And um, normal is basically what is written on that. I mean, it's a huge range. But what does your body function best at? So your body function best when it is um, about... 50 to 80 is what I what I like to rate or shoot for with my uh, with my patients and my kids and my families. So I have my the doctor check a 25 OH and um, remember to always make sure it's a vitamin D3 because that's the one that will really be absorbing. And I like to optimize it. So for me, like we take by the cod liver oil, we take little supplements. Um, so if somebody is usually lower than 30, I like to do, depending on if they have, uh, if their calcium is within normal range, because again, if they have parathyroid issues, um, we want to make, we don't want to boost them up so high. So for me, what I do for vitamin D deficiency is um, if they have anything lower than 30, and that is nanograms per milliliter, if they have anything lower than 30, what happens is that... I want to make sure that they supplement really fast because so they can feel better. Again, you need to only do this with your doctor. So I like to put people on 20,000 international units for about three weeks, and then I um, bring it down to maintenance dose, which is usually 20 times their weight in pounds, right? So that is what I normally do. And um, usually they have stay um, 20 times their weight in pounds, or about 2,000 to 4,000 international units per day. And remember, you can, even though it's rare, you can get vitamin D overdose. And that's when it's greater than 150 nanograms per milliliter. So, um, and but then that way you can have like more calcium in your blood that could cause like kidney damage or even psychosis. Um, but remember, remember that vitamin D is, you need to do it with fats because it's a fat soluble vitamin. Okay, so let's go ahead now and quickly recap about, you know, we talked about where you can get it and we talked about um, what you can, like how it helps your bone health, it helps with cancers and combats heart disease and an immune system. And then we talked about the other benefits. So it's really, really, really important, right? To make sure, like, so especially for children, for children you want to do at least 35 units per pound per day. And if you have ages from um, 5 to 10, we want to do at least 25, um, 2,500 units per day. But again, for adults, remember, I really like to stay within that 2,000, 5,000 range um, to really bring that up. And uh, with the kids, so... Again, there are some, there's not a lot of interactions. Um, vitamin D and vitamin A have a great important relationships. Um, some studies have suggested that there's a possibility for vitamin D deficiency to become worse when a patient takes high doses of vitamin A. So again, always check with your doctor. Um, remember we talked about, now I just wanna to quickly touch on what you take, cod liver oil. So cod liver oil is a DHA, it provides DHA, and it provides A and D3, and lesser amounts of vitamin K2, uh, vitamin K and E. That all helps with absorption and um, utilization of minerals and nutrients, and fights inflammation, um, and some, so because some people can't really tolerate the vitamin D supplementation, so then we do the, we do the cod liver oil, and I recommend about a teaspoon of that per day of high quality cod liver oil. Some people will need uh, vitamin K with that. And remember vitamin K, vitamin K is another amazing nutrient that um, you can get like from just all these 
nutritious sources because what vitamin K2 does is vitamin K K2 helps to what does it do? Vitamin K helps vitamin K2. Yeah, vitamin well, it's K2. important for yep. cardiovascular protection, cancer, strong bones. And it is found in dietary sources like fermented foods. Yeah, that's why we eat those fermented yeah. foods every day. What else, Abdullah? And it is produced by bacteria in your gut. Wow. It, its job is to tell the calcium where to go. So in doing so, it helps to reduce cal calcification. 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 <laughs> so... It does. It really helps. So sometimes we need to also take vitamin K2 with it. So we like to get it through our, remember, it's good green leafy vegetables like lettuce and broccoli and spinach and K. And it's important for, again, cardiovascular, strong bone health because it tells your calcium where it needs to go. And so whenever we increase the use of our vitamin D intake through supplementation, we also want to, um, we can actually cause a relative insufficiency of vitamin K, A, and E. And so this is why one a lot of people do the cod liver oil. But the vitamin K2 or MK7 is really needed to vitamin D to work effectively. Okay. Yeah. And um, a dosage about 100 to uh, 250 nanograms um, of vitamin K2 daily is really necessary or about 50, 50 nanograms um, for every 5,000 for me, I like to just have one. Once I have people eating lots of vegetables, protein, and healthy fats, that just fills in the gaps. So when you're taking the vitamin K, when D, you know, meeting your K needs is really important. And again, what where is where is vitamin K found? Vitamin K is found greens, um, fermented, greens vegetables, fermented vegetables, uh, and, cod liver yeah. oil you know, and then liver and organ meats. So we don't do all that, but we eat lots of greens. We have fermented vegetables. We have whey. We have lots of cod liver oil. Um, and we have lots of nuts. Yes. Lots of nuts. They love nuts. So, um, and remember, again, that we're not talking about, so there's a difference between vitamin K2 and vitamin K1. Vitamin K1, remember, is important for blood clotting. And... Um, it's really, really important um, to have, but do not mix it with warfarin. So that's just a side note. So I think we, if you guys have any other questions, I'm just going to go. If you guys have any questions for me or Abdullah, uh, we're going to go through these. Gulsum has fatigue. Gulsum, this can all help you with your fatigue. You have to get to the underlining root cause. And just by getting to the underlining root cause of this, you have a lot less fatigue. Um, Daniela, hi again. Uh, Daniel, are you in California? I'm like so jealous. You know how nice it is right now in California. Um, oh, you're watching. Zainab is watching from London. <laughs> how cool is that? Zainab, thank you. Um, Terry, is I'm on low vitamin D, otherwise all good. Yes. And Sycamore, Illinois. So you're my fellow Illinoisan. <laughs> if there's a word, there must be a word. Yasmin, how oh, Portland. And Kosum is from Portland. Um, Terry is most of the foods I love to eat. Danielle, cute. Oh, look, Sadaf, Sadaf saying, good job, Abdullah, good job. <laughs> this kid is, wow, good job, mama. <laughs> Keep on saying stuff like that so I can get him to do more of it. Because he does, he has so much information in this little hat. I love it. Um... So Hibba's like, good job, Abdullah. And then, yes, um, drops are an amazing way to take it. So there's so many. Leanna says, I love you, Holistic Mom. I love you all. Mwah. Um, again, I'm here for you guys. Your son is a future generation of a holistic doctor. <laughs> he just knows a lot. He knows what he puts in his body, yes? Yeah. Every little thing that he puts on his skin, he tell them. Everything that you put on your skin and everything you put on your body, you know it's where, where, where it's from. I don't really put anything on my skin. Yeah, well, we don't put that much on our skin. <laughs> um, Daniela, I'm trying. Um, I want to try to make them as educated as possible so they know what goes in their body and on their body. And then Yasmin's from Australia. How's, how is that? Awesome. 
Thank you so much. You guys rock. Okay. Love you guys. Love you guys too. Okay. Dawn wants help with... Oh, Terry says both are gifted. So Dawn wants help with constipation for an 11-month-old. Ooh. And what is the best non-dairy milk to change too soon? So, Bill, what, what non-dairy milk do we have at home? Almond milk. Almond milk. So again, you can get organic almond milk. There's hemp milk. There's... And we've even tried to make... I used to even make the almond milk. You did. <laughs> I did. Um... And so, because they can't even, they, they loved it. So they're probably stuck in smoothies, so they didn't know. But it's really, really cool because of the fact that once you, um, one, always start um, Dawn, you really want to make sure you start a probiotic because that will help the 11-month-old, especially with the constipation. You want to remove some of the foods that he's maybe having, like if he's doing rice or if he's doing grains. You want to just stick, really stick him through vegetables, protein, and healthy fats, add probiotics, you can have fish, you can have all these supplements um, in a child too, right? We used to take it as kids, the, the kids started taking it, and that should help with constipation. If not, then we need to go stricter diets, which are more like a GAPS introduction diet without dairy, that will help to, um, to figure out exactly what foods are bothering him, and then go from there. Then we have, next question, Terry, thank you, Danielle. I love the heart, you guys. I love you too. Um, why do many of us have back problems? It's because of the fact that we're also deficient and we are inflamed. Because if you think about it for, for back issues, it, really inflammation is the underlying root cause of that. So if we can heal the underlying root cause, you can heal not one symptom, but then all of them simultaneously, including the back problems. Um, and we just talked about these simple problems. Seriously, I've had people with severe de de degenerative disc disease no longer have problems once we are able to get to the underlying root cause. Best advice for a healthy pregnancy. So best advice is the way that you live now. You should be the way that you live then. So I know I notice a difference with all of these babies. Um, I had terrible diets with the first two. I did. And I noticed that I was, I was miserable. Like I had severe indigestion. I was miserable. But then with the last baby, I lived the way I live now. So it was no grains, no dairy, no sugar, no processed foods, bone broth, Epsom salt, bath, all that fun stuff. Um, and I didn't have any indigestion and I didn't have any nausea. So really sticking with them. And then there are some supplements, um, making sure your uh, vitamin D is optimized, making sure you're taking some sort of fish oil, magnesium. Um, again, remember to talk to your doctor. But there's really great ways to keep yourself as clean from the inside out can really optimize a pregnancy. Because remember, it's your gut, like what you eat during your pregnancy, one, you're not eating for two. You are actually eating for the health of your child. Because your genetics will help to start within like a pregnancy, like what, what's going on in that baby. So that your health determines a child's health. So make sure you eat healthy so then the child also is as healthy as possible and develops a good microbiome. Um, Daniela says, at what age do you introduce little kids to supplements? So I think, I mean, you, I, have st I started um, infant probiotics. There's infant probiotics out there. That's the one I did. And then at four months, I started vitamin D with the kids. And remember, um, that is a recommendation to do vitamin D with the kids. But there's a lot of artificial vitamin D out there. So if you look, if you just go to your normal grocery store to get vitamin D, you know what's really crazy is that it has a lot of artificial stuff in it. It has like artificial flavors. I know, crazy, right? So you really want to make sure that um, it's, it's you get it from a natural food store um, and... Uh, vitamin D, about 400 international units of vitamin D. I start probiotics. And then as they get older, then I'll just introduce the other pieces as well. So I ha hope that has helped, Daniela. I hope. Remember, you guys, we are here for you. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. We will comment. Um, it does get a little crazy sometimes, so be patient. Um, but I'm here for you. Abdullah is here for you. And remember, I have a Facebook page called Holistic Mom MD, which obviously you are on, but a book called The Holistic RX, Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation and Disease that has all of this inside of it. Um, again, I'm here for you. And if you have any questions, you know where to message away. <laughs> Please, 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 um, you are so, so welcome, you guys. 
And again, um, please like and share this video so we can spread the message far and wide and to show that our children, we give them less uh, credit than they actually deserve because of the fact that they actually understand everything um, to an adult level, to the to age three-year-old, because even my three-year-old will not touch these kind of foods. Um, last thing Saliha says, recommend a particular company. So there's lots of different companies for probiotics. You just want to make sure that has enough strains. Uh, they have a lot of gut, gut issues, but uh, there's enough strain. So there's a lot of infant probiotics. Um, so I hope that answers your question. We got to run. And look, they're all saying good job. Say bye-bye. You guys like and share this. Mwah. Have a great day. Bye.